Hello and welcome. You have tuned into Market Fara Fat on ET Now. I'm Shristi Sharma. With me is Shell D'Souza. And viewers, this is the show where in the next one hour we're going to be highlighting all the counters that are buzzing as of now, either on the back of the news flow or on the back of the earnings. And earnings season is in full flow. We are getting a lot of earnings, and one of the earnings are also on the bottom of your screen as well. We will come all to all of that. But before that, uh, let's have a look at what the markets are up to. So, Shell. Uh, fall that is coming in because since the start of the day we have seen weakness trickling in but in the last 15 uh, minutes or so the weakness has actually uh, been more while for the bank nifty which is down about 200 points Absolutely. Uh, good afternoon to you, Shishi. And yes, if you look at the markets, definitely weak weakness is creeping in for the benchmark indices. Right now, we are down about 170 points from the day's highest point. When you talk about the Nifty index, let's take a look at Nifty Bank. And as you can see, Nifty Bank also right now is at the day's lowest point. So yes, uh, we have seen some weakness that we took in, or rather, we were seeing weak market breadth actually, and now it is just uh, it's a kind of uh, accelerated or exaggerated. If you look at uh, Bank Nifty, it is down. Down about 350 points from the day's highest point. A lot of names coming in, a lot of stocks actually in focus on back of the earnings. Supreme Industries also has come out with its numbers, and if you look at Supreme Industries numbers, just to take a quick look at it, the profit has come in uh, higher. Uh, rather, the profit has declined by about 1.3% on a year-on-year -year basis, while revenue has seen an uptick of about 15.8%. You have the EBITDA margin that's come in sharply lower on a year-on-year -year basis. The EBITDA margin is coming in at around 16.3% versus. Uh, was about 18.5 percent, and the stock right now giving up some of its gains, as you can see. And Bank of Maharashtra reporting healthy set of numbers once again, uh, Shristi. All right, that's the way how the markets are up to. So uh, we will uh, also address the numbers that will come during uh, the show as well. But uh, before that, let me welcome our team of researchers as well as our technical expert for today. On the technical front, we have been joined by Vinay Rajani uh, of HDFC Securities as well as on the research side. Ankita as well as Snehi are joining us. A very good afternoon to all three of you. So let's uh, kick start uh, the journey then. And the first stock that we're going to be highlighting is Zomato because that counter is in focus after Goldman Sachs bullish brokerage note on this one, wherein for Zomato, uh, Goldman Sachs has actually uh, gone ahead uh, with a target price of 240 rupees. They have hiked it from 170 rupees earlier. Maintaining a buy rating, what they are saying is that the quick commerce implied value is now larger than the food business, and the growth profile of Blinkit is at 53 percent for FY24 and 27 estimates on a year-on-year -year basis. Now, Blinkit is now valued at just 109 rupees a piece, while the food delivery is at 98 rupees a piece. So that's how they are stacking up the valuations, and Zomato continues to improve the profitability and believe it's uh, it. it Multiples could further relate, and that's why we are seeing Zomato in focus today. And the stock was also up around two percent the last time I checked. All right, that is the matter for you. That is in focus in today's trading session. Let's talk about Crystal, uh, and the reason why Crystal is in focus because our wholly owned subsidiary of Crystal Ratings has been approved uh, to be uh, give uh, environmental, uh, social, and governance. That is ESG ratings. Uh, that's what the release coming in from Crystal stated. They stated that uh, SEBI has approved Crystal ESG ratings and analytics limited, which is an arm of Crystal ratings as a category category one provider of environmental, social, and governance ratings. Remember, in July 2023, uh, SEBI had amended the credit rating agencies regulation to include a chapter on ESG rating providers uh, to ensure that no entity provides. ESG rating unless it is certified by SEBI, and in September 2023, Crystal's board had approved setting up of this step, uh, step down subsidiary to carry out the business of an ESG rating providers. And now that particular arm has got the approval from SEBI, and on back of that, you can see Crystal that's trading higher by about three percent, approximately 2.7 percent as we speak. All right, that's about Crystal. But moving on, then and uh, let's shift focus to Bharat Electronics. And Vinay, you have been tracking this counter. Uh, though of late, we have seen a great move on BEL. But at this point in time, are you still bullish? And any targets to look out for? Yeah. So thanks for having me, having me on the show. So definitely, the uh, trend of the stock is clearly bullish today. Only it has hit an all-time high of 241.65. Month till date, we have seen a rise of 19%. So it is into continuation. It is one of the PSU stocks which is there in the defensive 
uh, defense uh, space so defense stocks have been performing well tsu stocks have been performing well and the stock, uh, trend of the stock is clearly uh, up it is above all moving averages and making high tops high bottom so still uh, though it is not moving that much from the intraday high it has come down but i will see a strong support around to it at 224 which happens to be the pre uh, recent swing low so unless unless and until we see that stock breaching 224 on the downside we should continue to hold on to the long position so trend is bullish uh, stop loss uh, trailing stop loss in long position should be kept at 224 all right so that is bharat electronics for you ankita let's talk about lnt tech nose dive is what the uh, stock is taking in today's trading session earnings to be blamed Absolutely, Cheryl. Nose dive is the right word for this particular counter. In fact, it was down nine percent in morning, and uh, right now it's trading with cuts of seven percent and holding on to those losses. Uh, and this, of course, uh, has to be blamed on the earnings. You know, this is after the IT firm guided for a hundred basis points fall in its uh, FI25 EBIT margin as it aims to build capabilities to secure future growth. This, along with moderate revenue guidance, uh, triggered the fall. Even though the company reported a rather, uh, you know, positive set of results for the March quarter, LNT report. reported a 0.2% growth in the net profit to 340 crores and slower revenue growth and narrowing of margins its revenue grew 5% to 2537 crore rupees well on the margin front the management has guided for a slightly muted number which uh, you know in the near term as the company ramps up the investment in areas are critical for the future couple of brokerage notes that have come out uh, Nubama has stuck to its hold rating on the stock with a target price of 4970 rupees Morgan Stanley has an underweight call on L&T Tech with a target price of 4200 rupees and Antique has downgraded the stock to hold and also cut the target price to 4500 rupees from 5000 rupees uh, so that's the word coming in for L&T Tech uh, and that stock is down and out uh, 7% All right so that is LNT uh tech for you that is in focus in today's trading session and yes uh, Shristi uh, while there is one side you have LNT tech that is falling there's another stock that's buzzing isn't it Well yes that's Tech Mahindra and one of the top gainers in uh, Nifty 50 today and uh, let's go to Snehi then to understand like what actually happened with Tech Mahindra and why the street is so much excited Well, absolutely, Shristi. A very good set of numbers coming in from Tech Mahindra. Their consolidated revenue has come in at twelve thousand eight seventy one crores versus thirteen thousand one hundred one crores. A downtick of almost two percent sequentially, but this was uh, largely uh, factored in by the street. Even when you look at the consolidated patch, now patch is where all eyes were because that has come in at six sixty one crores versus five hundred ten crores, which is up thirty percent on a sequential basis. Now, even when you uh, take a look at what the management had to say, they say that uh, quarter four marks the bottom of performance on the Year on year basis, and FY25 will be better than FY24. They're seeing some volatility in discretionary spends. Uh, they say that that may remain high, and uh, so that's what uh, they're uh, saying. This is what the management had to say. And uh, on the commentary, on the back of this commentary, that FY25 will be better than FY24. Stock is doing pretty well today. Also, a couple of brokerage notes that we do have coming in on this stock today. Then from Macquarie, you uh, they have gone ahead, maintained an underperform with a target price of 930 rupees. They appreciate the plans of the company. Need to grow uh, faster in FY27. You also have Jefferies and on Tech Mandal. They've maintained underperform rating, but they've also gone ahead and cut the target price to 1065 from 1080. UBS has maintained a sell rating, cut the target price from 11 uh, to 1150 rupees from 1200. They believe that the plan is ambitious, but they're not sure if the market is ready for this plan of theirs in FY27. And JP Morgan then they have also maintained underweight, but have hiked the target price to 1100 from 1050. So that's largely the roundup coming in on. Tech Mahindra this time around. All right, so that is all about Tech Mahindra and what brokerages have to say. The stock is among the top gainers on the Nifty. But Vinay, let's talk about Power Grid. And where is this one headed on the charts? Yeah, so Power Grid has risen four percent week till date. So nice movement is there, and it seems. to have broken out from the symmetrical triangle pattern on the weekly chart and it is one of the psu uh, stock and uh, as we all know that uh, nsc pse index has hit an all time high by surpassing the previous swing high so along with the small cap index uh, nsc uh, pse index has also hit an all time high so this is one of the constituent uh, of the public sector enterprise index and i feel that along with the sector strength this can continue its uptrend and symmetrical triangle breakout is all, uh, already there so i see stock hitting a new all time high uh, which is around 299 uh, just 5 rupees away from this level so looks very strong on the chart and strong support is there around 275 which happens to be the 50 days exponential moving average for the stock 
so i see a clear cut uptrend for the counter uh, sector has been doing good so keeping a support of 275 in mind one can continue to hold on to the long positions and once it surpasses the new all time uh, surpasses the uh, previous all time high to which uh, which is placed at 299 one can have a strategy of uh, uh, trailing uh, holding a, with a trailing stop loss that would be a best strategy to hold on this particular stock so yes it is into a clear uh, clear cut uptrend and 275 is a strong support All right then, two seventy five is a strong support uh, coming in uh, for that counter. But moving on then, let's just focus to Glenmark Life Sciences because you will remember that just yesterday during the closing trades, uh, the numbers came in and Cheryl, the stock actually tanked um, more than seven percent yesterday. Uh, yesterday, yes. <laughs> But uh, that's when uh, Bofa has come out with a note after getting into their analyst call as well, and Bofa is uh, sounding pretty bullish on this one where they maintain their buy rating on this particular. The counter and retain the target price to 940 rupees. Though the Q4, um, we have seen a double-digit decline onto their profit figure on a YY basis. But Gofa is actually saying that the Red Sea disruption is leading to a soft Q4. But going ahead, they are expecting a recovery in FY25 with the drivers in place. Though the margin guidance by the company is cautious, and Gofa believes that they are at the higher end, but they are not changing any target price on this one. And hence, we are seeing. Good recovery on Glenmark Life Sciences, up around seven and a half percent as of now. All right, that is Glenmark Life Sciences. Uh, if you look at it today, it, oh, totally the opposite move coming in for that particular counter. But Vinay, let's talk about M and M Finance. And this one actually hit a rough patch on back of the fraud detection, and they had to defer their earnings as well. That's why you can see the sharp correction in the stock as well. If you look at the charts, but what's your take coming in for M and M Finance? Uh, will the things uh, turn better, or do you see some more hurdles? Yeah, so right now the trend of M&M Finance is clearly uh, on the bearish side. Or if we are talking about the short-term charts, so uh, recent high was at 308, and from that level it has uh, gone down by more than 50 rupees. So healthy correction in the good quality stocks we must say. Uh, but uh, the long-term support which I see around 253. So 253 is a strong support which is derived from the 100-week moving average. So 100-week moving average actually acted as a strong reversal. Uh, connection uh, with Vinay on that particular note he was talking about M&M finance but on that note we'll slip into a break on this edition of market patapat when we come back we'll talk about more stocks as well as get his view on M&M finance Welcome back. You're watching Market for Tafat on ET now. And Vinay, while we were slipping into break, uh, you had your views on M&M Finance. And uh, actually, uh, if we have you with us, then can we talk about uh, M&M Finance? All right. Let me. Okay. Let me let me try and connect the line with uh, Vinay. Then let's talk about Biocon instead. And that particular counter is soaring away in uh, trade today. If you look at Biocon stock price, it is now trading higher by about six percent or so. The newest information that we have is that National Company Tribunal, that's the NCLT, has approved the scheme of amalgamation of biofusion therapeutics with Biocon Pharma. And on the back of that. Uh, most likely, the stock is seeing a very good up move, about six and a half percent as we speak, Shristi. All right, great gains on Biocon, but another stock that is zooming in trade today, and that is Zensar Tech. Ankita, take us to the uh, fine print of the earnings this time. Well, absolutely, Zensar Tech is soaring away in trade. In fact, uh, it jumped a good 12 percent in the morning. Uh, you know, after the company reported a robust set of numbers for the March quarter, and the company's uh, pat rose seven percent. Uh, To one hundred and seventy-three crore rupees from uh, a year ago period. Now the revenue was up two point one percent on a sequential basis at one thousand two hundred crore rupees. However, uh, you know if you look at uh, the company's EBIT margins, that saw a bit of a decline of uh, around ten odd basis points. Uh, but that was a dampener coming in there. But uh, if you look at the company's order book, that grew one hundred and eighty-one uh, million dollars from one hundred and seventy-four million dollars in uh, the year ago period and one hundred and sixty-seven million dollars in the December quarter. Now, the attrition rate also fell nineteen point eight percent in the March quarter to ten point nine percent. Signaling an improved employee retention over successive quarters. So that's a good set of numbers coming in for Zensar Tech. In fact, it's trading with gains of nine percent right now. All right, let's move on. Then, Snehi, let's talk about Bajaj Finance, another one that is sulking in uh, trade today. 
Hey Cheryl, and uh, it's interesting to note that this stock is sulking away in today's trading session despite posting a largely overall, uh, you know, overall inline set of numbers. NII has come in inline, PPOP slight miss but not much to worry about and on the other side net profit is a slight beat on what the street was expecting as well. But uh, two reasons uh, because of why the stock is sulking away despite uh, posting numbers that are largely in line with street expectations. The first one is management commentary. Now management commentary is slightly cautious going ahead. They say that AUM growth is seen between 26 and 28 percent for FY25. Remember, this is compared to the 34 percent that they have compared to FY24. This is slightly lesser. Return on equity may also drag in FY25 due to the capital raising that they've done in quarter three of FY24. They also see NIMS moderating by 30 to 40 bips over the next uh, two quarters. Rural NPAs also they're seeing declining due to the embargo that's been put on them by RBI on their Insta Ecom uh, cards as well. And uh, credit cost to rise by 1.75 to uh, rise to 1.75 to 1.85 percent in FY25 versus 1.63 in quarter four. So that's another negative coming in that the company is having on their outlook. Uh, moving on, let's also take a look at what some brokerages have to say and JP Morgan has maintained an overweight rating with a price target of 8,500. Macquarie has maintained a neutral stance with 8,100 as their target. UBS on the other side has uh, maintained a sell rating on this stock as well with a target price of 6,800. So on the back of cautious management commentary and especially this uh, bearish note coming by UBS, the stock is down uh, despite uh, reporting numbers that were largely in line with expectations. All right, uh, uh, moving on then, let's shift focus to uh, Loris Labs then and this counter is in focus definitely on the back of the earnings where this time around it was yet again a miss by the company, especially the margins then came in around 17 odd percent. But the good part is that their segmental revenue and especially their API sales have been really strong this time which have seen a jump of 30 percent on a YOI basis as well as if we talk about their ARV API revenue that has seen a jump of 17 percent on a YOI as well as on the sequence basis and the cost of uh, management commentary uh, on the EBITDA margin front that for FY25 they, are, they believe that it could be uh, better than what they have seen in FY24 is definitely giving the confidence and even the brokerages are bullish where Dam Capital has gone ahead and hiked the target price to 472 rupees from 424 earlier. They are saying that the healthy pickup in the revenues neutralized by the drop in the gross margins. Uh, the pickup in the revenue uh, is driven by the higher non-ARV as well as this CDMO business which should lead to sharp EBITDA and profit growth from FY25 onwards. So damn capital is positive, the management commentary is positive and hence you are seeing the stock is also now in the positive territory holding on to the gains of almost 2%. Right, and that is uh, Loris Labs for you, but let's hear our what the founder and the CEO of the company had to say in, in uh, exclusive interaction with us. We are um continuing to invest in uh, uh, CDMO space. We believe future belongs to the companies who focus on uh, manufacturing, uh, especially uh, involving uh, uh, sustainable technologies like continuous flow chemistry, biocatalysis. Those we are doing very good. FY25, we see good revenues coming from animal health to CDMO. Uh, the, all the fair, uh, we were supposed to build four manufacturing blocks. Uh, two were operational already, the third one uh, will go operational from June and fourth one we started construction that will be useful for uh, manufacturing qualified next year. So uh, this year we see significant growth and uh, next year uh, we will also see a lot of growth because we are doing uh, commercial validations. The peak revenues as we indicated earlier will come All in. Alright, let's move on then. Let's talk about Avas financiers and this particular counter is in focus on back of his earnings. If you look at the stock price of Avas, it was trading higher by about 5%, taking the stock uh, to about a six-month high, but now it's given up all of its gains. The company posted a 12% year-on-year rise in their consolidated net profit in the quarter gone by and the loan group stood up uh, stood at about 22% and disbursement growth of about 19%. Uh, and uh, Jeffries is of the view that both of these matrices were very encouraging. They've raised the target price to about 2,000 rupees per share for 1,940 rupees per share, maintaining a buy stance. What Jeffries is saying, they expect the return on equity to improve uh, to about 16% by fiscal 2026 from 14% currently. So Avas reporting good set of numbers. You have Jeffries giving a thumbs up. The stock was trading higher by about 5%. Now the stock is trading higher by about 1.5%.
All right, moving on then, one of the other IT counters that are buzzing today is Emphasis. And uh, Snehi, good gains on Emphasis as well. Take us through what's the news flow here. Well, yeah, Shishti, good set of numbers coming in for Emphasis as well. Their revenue has grown by 2.1% sequentially in terms of constant currency led by the direct business. And their DC, DXC business has also bounced back after a continuous sequential decline. So, good numbers coming over there as well. Their TCV has remained subdued, however. And FI24 new TCV on the trailing 12-month basis is at $1.4 billion, which is up 5% on a year-on-year -year basis. Net profit has come in at 390 crores, which is up 5.5% sequentially as well. Now, later in the day, we spoke to the management and they say that they expect FY25 revenue growth to be better than the industry. They're cautiously optimistic on growth in FY25 as well. They're aiming for EBIT margin of 14.6 to 16% in FY25. They aim to maintain the stable and sustainable margins going ahead. Deal pipeline is also looking strong, backed by large contracts, and the focus will remain on generative AI-based transformative projects. Early signs of TCV to revenue conversion pickup are also uh, being seen and that's also on the radar going ahead. So largely this is what the management had to say and good set of numbers coming in from emphasis. Stock up 3.5% almost on the back of these numbers. Alright, since Nehi was outlining what the management had to say, in fact, year out what management told us uh, in the conversation post their earnings on uh, the growth ahead. Uh, our guidance to the to the community is we should be in the range of 14.6% to 16% on a reported basis, which on a like-to-like -like basis will be 15.7 to 16.17.1, uh, and uh, that is compared to the 15.25 to 16.25% range that we had last year, which indicates that we have an outward bias, and within this range also, our expectation is we should be you know moving if not to the top end, to the middle end, middle of the uh, range very soon. Uh, we have called for the fact that FY25 will be a growth year. And we do expect to deliver better than uh, uh, above market growth. So that really means on a relative basis, uh, if the broad, uh, you know, NASCOM growth, you know, ends up being in, in uh, low to bit single digits, then we should definitely grow faster than that. All right then, uh, but with this moving on uh, to uh, another news flow wherein Mukesh Ambani Bank Geo Cinema has announced a subscription plan of just 29 rupees per month and that is less than a rupee per day. Now with the Ambani's ambition to disrupt India's OTT market, so how will it impact its competitors and what about the profitability aspect of this business model? Let's listen in to Karan Tharani's take. And I think this move is more disruptive for the global OTT giants uh, because I think their pricing is at a hefty premium versus the 30 rupees per month. Uh, so I think specifically, you know, companies like Netflix, Amazon, it will be tough for them to, you know, take price hikes uh, because the kind of variety of content Geo is going to have and post regulatory approvals if RL Disney deal does come through, you might also see Disney con content getting bundled into this, which means that the depth of variety of content uh, is going to be very huge. So as of now, I think the depth of depth and variety of content is not uh, on par with the global OTT companies as far as English content is concerned. But once the RL Disney deal happens, the depth will become uh, you know match matchable to whatever uh, the other uh, global giants are giving me right now in terms of content variety. So I think it's quite disruptive for you know two three things. One is the ARPU. Second is the S Ford revenue market growth rate. I think the growth rates for this market is pegged at about 25-30%. You will not see this kind of growth rates because uh, you know platforms may not, may not be able to raise ARPU beyond a point. Third very big point, because you can't raise ARPU, uh, this industry is already making losses because of high content costs. So most of these platforms, uh, you know, their plans of you know getting to break even or profitability gets more prolonged. So this is I think a threefold impact as far as uh, the, you know this pricing is concerned by GeoCinema. All right, and on that note, we slip into a break on this edition of Market for Rafat. Stay tuned. More on the other side. Don't go anywhere. If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now.